Welcome back, everybody. Two things before we get started. If you can like and subscribe, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. The second thing is there are chapter markers all throughout the video. If there's anything specific that you're looking for, go ahead and click on those markers. But otherwise, let's get right into it. Back in 2021, Nike released the Greater Than series, or otherwise known as the GT series. It included a trio of shoes, the Cut, the Jump, and the Run. The shoes were built specifically for different play styles, and all of them almost immediately became a hit, especially the GT Cut. The only issue with the GT Cut at that time in 2021 was Nike was facing a lot of delays when it comes to shipping. They had a lot of issues getting uh, product to customers on time and things like that. But also the GT Cut was limited in terms of manufacturing. They didn't really or at least from my perspective, it didn't seem like they produced a whole lot of shoes. So what that meant for a lot of buyers like myself was we had to resort to the resale market and the resale on these were marked up sometimes double what the actual price was, making it almost impossible to get the shoe. Fast forward to 2023, 2024, and we actually have two new additions to the GT line, the GT Cut Academy, which is a takedown model of the GT Cut, and then the GT Hustle. Today, however, we got the GT Cut 3 in the special ASW or All-Star Weekend colorway. If you've ever purchased a GT line shoe, you know what to expect when it comes to the packaging. I would say the packaging is upscaled. It's a nice packaging experience. Um, specifically, you have glossy print that is color matched to the box. And it really is just a consistent experience, which is always a nice thing. Now this model comes in at a $10 premium over the quote unquote regular version. And now you may be asking the question, what exactly comes in the box when you actually are paying a $10 premium? And the quick answer is nothing. Traditionally, when Nike prices it on a premium level or adds an additional price to it, so the normal GT Cut 3 comes in at $190. The GT Cut 3 ASW comes in at $200. It doesn't come with extra laces. It doesn't come with any special packaging. It's just the generic packaging that you get with the normal GT Cut. When it comes to the design of the GT Cut 3, it is more a spiritual successor to the GT Cut 1. And what I mean by that is it looks more similar to the 1 than it does to the 2. It looks like Nike kind of went away from that base design in the GT Cut 2. And who knows why, but the GT Cut 3 kind of gets back to basics and looks more iterative from the one than it does from the two. Now, one big difference that you have from the one to the three is this little heel counter lip. Now, I think this is more function than design, but it reminds me of the Sakai LD waffle shoe. This specifically, I think this is more functional though. If with your foot sitting in the shoe, your heel specifically sitting in a cup like um, mold, this is more intended for stability than it is for design, but it happens to be a nice little design aesthetic. The GT line this year is taking a heavy dose of 90s nostalgia. The GT Cut 3 specifically is paying homage to the Nike Zoom Flight 5. The Nike Zoom Flight 5 was a incredibly iconic shoe with some really good design elements. The GT Cut 3 ASW borrows a lot from that shoe, obviously, as we've said. So one of the most iconic features of that shoe was that iridescent mirrored bubble on the lateral side of the shoe. It wasn't functional, it was more designed than anything else, but it was a really cool looking item on that shoe. The GT Cut 3 does bring that over, and instead of it being a mirrored uh, bubble, you know, that is iridescent, it is an iridescent kind of um, soft plastic material. It has the GT and Nike logos embossed in there. And then you have a couple of their other design choices that were borrowed from that. So you have the Nike logo, but rather than being a proper Nike logo, it's actually a reverse swoosh. You have the Nike Sportswear tag and it's a Nike Sportswear team tag, but it's also multifunctional because it acts as a loop for your finger to pull the shoe on. And then stitched on the insole, dare I say it seems a little bit premium, says the Nike Sportswear team tag once again. Going around to the back of the shoe on the heel tab, you have a green Nike hit. Now this might be a leather tab, feels more like felt than anything else, but that Nike word mark is actually the uh, same style or font of the flight logos of that era. The outsole is a translucent outsole, but you have actually on the forefoot, a iridescent material or iridescent color on that forefoot. And then on the heel, it's a translucent, more so clear um, outsole. All in all, the shoe looks great. Uh, you know, the silhouette of the shoe looks really, really good. And then in terms of the, the design and the colorway and the material choices, 
it is very, very reminiscent. Like if you saw the shoe on the street, you would say that looks like the Nike Zoom Fly 5. If you're a sneakerhead, if you're not a sneakerhead, you're gonna say, I remember those shoes from when I was a kid, or those look familiar or whatever the case may be. But either way, they did a good job in terms of the design um, overall of the GT Cut 3. But specifically on the ASW version, they did a great job of incorporating the Nike Zoom Flight 5, its features, you know, some of the design cues, the things that are iconic. They brought them over and made it an iconic shoe. Now, when it comes to the material choices for the GT Cut 3 ASW, you have a suede-like material. I want to call it felt because that's what it feels like that goes from the toe box all the way up through the tongue. It does feel nice and smooth, but I don't think it's raw materials. Going on the lateral side mud guard, you have like a Durabuck material. I don't even know what to call it. It's kind of like heat welded on to the upper. And then wrapping around the back, you have a green hit, which seems to be again, that same felt like material. It doesn't appear to be like any kind of leather or raw material. But then wrapping around the medial and lateral side is a ripstop material. And in this application, it seems to be work pretty well. It looks good. I'm a big fan of ripstop as I've said before. Um, but overall, when you think about a $200 price point and what you're getting for that $200 price point, these materials don't seem to be premium, at least in, you know, in my opinion. So it, I'm kind of let down with how much they cost versus what you get in return. Now it's easy to chalk up Nike charging a premium price for a shoe that doesn't have any raw materials. But when you think about the material choices it, with regard to weight, the shoe comes in weighing as felt 14.3 ounces for a size 12 and a half. From a player's perspective, having a lighter shoe means you can play longer and probably recover sooner. So any weight that you're shaving off the shoe is a welcome thing. When it comes to the fit, I have not had the best of luck when I went true to size with any of my GT shoes. I had the GT Jump, got that in a size 12, and I literally couldn't get my foot in the shoe. I got the GT Cut 2, and I literally could not get my foot in the shoe. So knowing based on my previous experiences and the fact that I wanted to really wear test the shoe for a long period of time, I went with a 12 and a half. Going with that 12 and a half, the shoe fit pretty well, it obviously for that reason fit a little bit long so i had a little bit of room into in the toe box area which i'm okay with um, in terms of the shoe itself it fit pretty well i didn't really have any issues except with the fact that i had some heel slip so what all i had to do was just tie the shoe a little bit tighter just to keep the shoe on my foot never had any issues where my foot was coming off the footbed or anything like that my foot stayed in the shoe and they were pretty comfortable with wear in general when it comes to the breathability i had no issues with any type of ventilation. They have perforations all along the tongue and all along the toe box and medial side of the shoe. Now, if those are, fu are functional, which I assume that they are, they're gonna obviously help with the breathing of the shoe. And in terms of my experiences, I had no issues with you know sweating or overheating or anything like that. So overall, I would say breathability was very good. Now, when it comes to cushioning, the thing I was most curious about with the GT Cut 3 is Nike's implementation of Zoom X cushioning. Zoom X in the past was really specifically for the run category. This is Nike's first implementation of Zoom X on a basketball shoe. Zoom X is a foam that was developed to just provide the most energy return for any wearer. So if you're running, you're getting a lot of energy return, which means more stamina. If you're playing basketball, in theory, it should mean more stamina, more bounce. You're gonna you know, have the sensation of what Zoom provides to its wearers. In my experiences, the cushioning felt a little bit on the stiffer side, and that's probably to be expected with any type of foam. It's a bit more dense, it's a bit more firm, but the more you play in it, the more bounces develop. It starts to get warmed up. It starts to kind of flatten out a little bit, a little bit more flexible. And that's what I've noticed is playing in them initially was like, I didn't have a whole lot of feedback. I couldn't really feel the cushioning underfoot. It just felt like any kind of foam with no feedback. The more I played in it, the warmer it got, the more responsive it became. So it became more bouncy and more, uh, I guess, plush. Now, when it comes to the traction, the traction was pretty good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great by no means. It has like a modified herringbone type of traction. By that, I mean, I didn't really have any issues, you know, making those cuts, driving or anything like that. They felt good underfoot. I felt secure. I didn't feel like I was going to slip. I did have to wipe the shoes to kind of get that traction back. 
but even with the dust on the outsole, I really didn't feel any slippage or anything like that. And as I said, it features that zigzag pattern or a modified herringbone pattern. And those zigs and zags are pretty tight when they, when they are in the medial side. And then as you move on to the lateral side, those zigzags actually get a bit wider and longer. Um, again, for those quick cuts. Now, when it comes to the durability of the traction, I noticed that the rubber was a bit softer and that could be because it's a translucent outsole. Um, if you got a solid outsole, you might actually end up with a bit more durability, a different rubber compound. But what I noticed on this is that the rubber is a bit softer, which means if you're playing these on outdoor courts, you're probably gonna see these run down much quicker than you would if you were playing indoors. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the GT Cut 3, it is an easy shoe to recommend in terms of just performance. It fits well, uh, traction's great, cushioning's great, it looks good. Um, I think it's an easy recommendation in that respect, but it's a hard recommendation when it comes to price. $190 and $200 respectively is a very, very difficult sell for anyone, you know, any reasonable person. Now, if you're someone who says, I wanna have this shoe immediately, I don't care about price, price is a non-factor, by all means, it, you're gonna be very happy with this shoe. But if you're someone who's price conscious, I think if you wait a little bit, you know, a few weeks from now, two, three weeks, uh, I think you're gonna have a very good chance of getting a pretty decent discount on this shoe. I could easily see it, especially knowing that there's a full size run on the Nike app available right now. If you're waiting a few weeks, you're gonna see this shoe get discounted maybe to 150, 140, even cheaper. And at that point, it's an easy or easier recommendation. That just about does it for the video. If there's anything I missed or anything you wanna know about the Nike GT Cut 3, leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.